I'm horrible at doing videos. Many of you that are going to see this video don't know me at all. Some of you do. This is really personal. It's just, I'm desperate and I don't know where else to go, who else, what else to do. And this video is in defense for my daughter, which was basically kidnapped. She was taken away from me with a, pre with a pretense of being returned after a month. That month turned into two months, and two months turned into I don't know when. I am not going to say that I'm a saint and that I didn't have my issues with my ex-wife. The relationship wasn't a good relationship, but I was never physically abusive. The accusations of my ex-wife, she basically stated that I had raped her. She stated that I was physically abusive, knocked her out, threw shoes at her face, that I locked my daughter in her room, that I would call my daughter the C word and uh, fortunately, based on the evidence provided, the judge saw through all that. So here I have it pulled up. The judge's words of the court case. His final judgment says it up top here. There was an incident where she said that I threw a shoe at her face, basically, when she was in bed with my daughter. And it clearly sees... You see, you can see it here. That even though I was in a stressful situation, he is not satisfied that the shoe was actually thrown at her. Also, here is the allegations that my ex-wife made on me raping her. He says here, rape is clearly a very serious allegation, and while some of the father's sexual demands may have been out of the ordinary, I am not satisfied that the father raped the mother. It appears that the parties did continue to have a sexual relationship throughout the marriage, and I know in particular that on several occasions the mother sought to reconcile with the father in circumstances where he had intimated that he felt their marriage was simply not working. Several times I tried telling her that our relationship just wasn't good. It was just not a healthy relationship, and she just always normalized it. Another ridiculous accusation my ex-wife made is that I found the birthing process to be absolutely vile and that my ex-wife looked and sounded particularly unpleasant when she gave birth. This is another fib because I actually filmed the birthing process. I was there the whole time holding her hand. I didn't leave her side for the eight hours that she was giving birth. and. She's also saying that I was not physically attracted to her and I thought she was gross, where clearly it states here that I was still physically attracted to my ex-wife as witness facts sought that I wanted to have sex with her shortly after giving birth. Another one is that she said I was physically abusive to my daughter and the one case that I admitted to being quote unquote physically abusive to my daughter is when I tapped my daughter's thigh with two fingers. And here it is, highlighted for you to read because I am uh, not the best. It's 5 30 in the morning and it's hard for me to process a lot of thoughts at this point in time. And also, she says that I locked my daughter in the room and just went off to do my own thing. And the judge here says that he is not satisfied with that. That obviously I wouldn't do that. Over here you can see where my ex-wife had claimed that I came home drunk one night and I put her in a headlock and that it was an aggressive thing. It was just me joking around and when she took it serious I was like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> but um, I was just showing her, like, I don't know. I forget why. But uh, I know I'm not a violent person. And then she also made an accusation that I had knocked her out unconscious. 
and to that the judge says that even though he thinks that I was verbally abusive towards her right here he's not satisfied that any violence that I used was other than self-defense because she did attack me she came at me dug her nails into me and all I did was shove her off and in that she dramatized it and pretended that I knocked her out as soon as she uh, opened her eyes after like sitting <laughs> sitting at the bedside for I don't know how long I was like wondering what the hell is she doing she just the first thing that came out of her mouth was oh my god you knocked me out I'm very bad at accents but um first thing that happens when someone actually gets knocked out because I have been knocked out they don't know what the hell just happened the first thing that comes out usually out of the person's m mouth if they say anything at all is what just happened where am I what's going on and this is what I am most unhappy with in the judgment when the judge discusses about my ex-wife leaving America to move to Guernsey he says that he is not convinced that she lived to come to a fixed and firm conclusion she would not return to the USA and therefore she did not mislead the father in relation to circumstances her departure from USA this is bogus and this is why I am upset with my lawyer and the FPA because had the judge known that my ex-wife started seeing her new boyfriend in January that she had already been talking to this man before she left America it would be clearly evident that she had no intention of returning and she did mislead us all and it is unlawful retention but my lawyer didn't do the best job and as a matter of fact there was some information that wasn't presented to the judge which I think would have completely flipped the case you see after my ex-wife and I split up in September of 2016 she moved back to Guernsey and by January she was sending me pictures of my daughter with this little blonde boy I had never seen before I didn't pay any mind to it I was like oh maybe it's just one of her friends kids but it turns out to be that this little boy is actually the son of a man she had been seeing since January and probably been speaking to before that while we were still together in the United States and probably before that they've had flings and she cheated on me without me even knowing and my lawyer advised me to divorce my ex-wife based on adultery which makes no sense because she herself was the adulterer she moved back to Guernsey very well knowing that she was going to be living with this new man as a matter of fact she had gotten pregnant by him and had a miscarriage this is all before we even went to court this was must have been June of 2017 she's already getting pregnant my daughter's telling me through videos daddy I want to have a sister I want to have a sister and I just didn't understand where this came from must have been her mom telling her you're gonna have a new sister mommy's pregnant and I was informed by my lawyer that this man that she moved in was alright even though it did make me feel upset because my daughter was being rushed into living with a man that she doesn't even know for a little girl that is that's not that's not a nice situation to be in that's traumatic like you're living with your dad and all of a sudden you're living in the house with a new man that you don't know turns out after the court hearing after I came back to America after going all the way to Guernsey, spending all that money to get a lawyer, to pay f the court fees, or and to travel out to Guernsey, which in itself is expensive, get a hotel room with my family. After we did all that, after the FPA advisor, the family proceedings advisor, sorry, informed us that this man is harmless, all of a sudden, when we get back to America, it turns out they had the wrong guy. The actual guy my ex-wife moved in with has three cases of domestic violence. In one case, 
he threw his ex-girlfriend across the room into a TV. It makes no sense. How do you go from being traumatized by a man who supposedly is physically abusive, supposedly, and then shortly after move in with a man that actually was physically abusive and it's proven and documented. He's also got 36 cases, uh, verbal of violent assault, uh, DUIs, drunk in public. The guy's a mess. And my daughter's allowed to live with this man unsupervised. Yeah, I get treated like a criminal. Here's where I first found out about the man that my ex-wife has moved in with, had a miscarriage with, and my daughter is now living with. It was January 26th of 2018. This was after the verdict, after the judgment. My lawyer sends me, I have, it says it right here. I have received documentation from the Guernsey police regarding my ex-wife's partner, but I cannot send this to you. Please telephone me and we can discuss this. This is when I found out. I don't think I have it written here. I'm going to look and see if I can find elsewhere where I actually have written confirmation of this man's domestic violence charges and his criminal record. But this is, this is not right. How can he all of a sudden, after the judgment, conveniently find out that this man was actually not a healthy man for my daughter to be around. Here I am discussing with my lawyer. I don't understand how the FPA did not do a proper background check on the dude that is living, that my daughter is living with. Does that not fall under incompetence? I say here, I feel like a lot of the details were overlooked and that I can elaborate on them. That my ex-wife indeed was emotionally abusive in the relationship and was always threatening to take my daughter away. I feel like I had no choice but to stay with her in that toxic relationship just to be with my daughter. And here I'm discussing how this isn't judgment, justice. On top of that, with all she's accused me of falsely, to then move in with a dude that I don't even compare to in the sense that this man is actually violent. I never have been. I've never been violent in my life, yet this man has been proven to be so multiple times. She's unfit. I don't think she's fit to be Eva's primary carer. And then here is he's giving me a bunch of jargon. He's telling me how... Uh, I, if I were to try, he's telling me if I were to try to remove my daughter from Guernsey, that I would not be successful. He says here, had you taken immediate action as soon as my daughter was left from uh, North Carolina, as soon as you suspected she was not coming back, it would be the complete opposite. I would have gotten her back. And he's saying now that the fact is that my daughter's home is in Guernsey. And she's established and apparently happy, apparently happy. Bar issues with the man that she's now living with. This is absurd, man. This is completely absurd. And then when I tell my lawyer we got to start putting pressure that I know I can win, especially with this new information on the man that she's living with, we presented to the judge how she is clearly unfit and unstable for her to make such false accusations about me to protect herself from the crime she has done with kidnapping my daughter he then tells me that he's gonna require me to increase my monthly payment to him of a thousand pounds per month plus a 50 pound interest he clearly knows I can't afford that because I was struggling to pay him the 550 pounds and I bargained with him to bring me down to 325 pounds plus 50 pound interest and all of a sudden he's raising me a thousand pounds. This is why I feel he never was interested in the case. He never believed in me. He was just trying to make a quick buck. It was probably slow season or whatever. And now he's just basically checkmated me. He was like, all right, you want to try to get your daughter back? Uh, nah, she's going to stay in Guernsey. Something needs to happen. Someone needs to 
do something about this. Someone needs to help us, man. The only thing she had on me is that I used to smoke cannabis. Which, in America now, the laws are changing, and slowly it's becoming aware that cannabis is pretty harmless. And as a matter of fact, it's medically proven to have great health benefits. But, with the advice of my lawyer and the court case and the judge, I quit it. I quit smoking marijuana in, or cannabis. I quit smoking cannabis in November of 2017. And now we are in March of 2018. So it's been about six months. It was a toxic relationship. So many times I told her, let's just be friends. We're not good as a couple. And every time I did, she'd start breaking down into hysterics, and I'd fear losing my daughter. So what does a man do in a situation like that, that truly really wants to be around his child? You just shut up and just say, okay, okay, we'll try to work it out. She would constantly call my mom. I remember one time, a few times actually, not even one time, a few times, she would, we'd be in a discussion, and then it turned to an argument because we didn't agree. And then she would immediately call my mom in hysterics, oh, Monica, Monica, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, she'd pass the phone to me, speak to your son. And when she'd pass the phone to me, her demeanor would completely change. She had me. What was I going to do? And then I had enough. And I just took it in faith that when she said she would come back, she would. I couldn't see somebody separating their child from the father just because the father doesn't want to be with the, child, with the mother. That's ridiculous. That's petty. That's abusive. You know how many women I've, speaking, I've spoken to ever since then that tell me, I wish my baby's father wanted to be part of their life. I wish my baby's father was like you. And her goal is to completely cut us out of her, out of my daughter's life. And I've looked it up. Even in the UK law, it states that taking a child without the parent's consent for longer than you say you're going to keep them is considered an unlawful, unlawful retention. And the punishment for that is my ex-wife fabricated all sorts of lies to protect her wrongful doings, and it worked. I'm a grown-ass man. I can overcome this. My daughter, she's a little girl. She doesn't know what's going on. I just, I, I, to me, it's inconceivable for someone to be so petty and vindictive to use their own child just to get back at the father or parent, whether it be a man or a woman, whichever. This cannot continue to happen. This happens way too often. And the courts are not doing anything about it. We need stronger judges that can sit there and do the, make the tough calls. We need lawyers that aren't out there just to make some cash. My lawyer used to be a criminal lawyer. I guess in Guernsey there aren't that many crimes and he's not making enough money off of it. So he went to divorce. There's a lot of divorces. There's a lot of money to be made off of that. Suckers just like me that you can play because they're desperate. How much longer are we going to allow this to happen, man? So you already heard my story. You heard what I had to say. Who I have behind me is my family, my immediate family. We got a larger family throughout the states that my daughter has had exposure to. But my immediate family, we all live really close together and we're always there for each other. And my daughter got to get close with all of us. And ever since what happened has happened, I have not been able to hang out with my family. Um, all I could do is think about how she should be here, how she should be with her cousins. My little sister's about to have a child, her first child, and my daughter's going to miss out on that. So this is us, and after this, you're going to see each of our story and what we had to say and our encounters with my ex-wife and my daughter. And I hope you have the time to listen, and hopefully our voices will be heard and something can happen. Change can, 
can be done because this is unjust 